G'day, in this video we'll be talking about how we can tap into the minerals in our soil by using our plants and the microbes within our soil. So that is looking at energy flow and mineral flows within our soil. If you're new to the channel, my name's Still Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. I also run a regenerative consulting business. So we help farmers across New South Wales improve their soils and farms by implementing strategies like this, concepts like this, so that we can grow our plants sustainably with less variation in our um, production. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So I wanna start off the conversation with the idea that there's actually so much nutrition and minerals in our soil that we simply just can't unlock because of the functioning of our soil and biology within our soil. So if you take phosphorus, for example, phosphorus exists in usual soil, like most typical soils, between 500 and 800 milligrams per kilo of soil. Now this is definitely gonna vary um, uh, depending on your soils and the age of your soils and, and the type of parent material. So in Australia, for example, we deal with soils with significantly less amounts of phosphorus in our soils. And so instead of you know, 500, it might be 200, 300, like a, a lot less, especially when you go over to WA. So when we consider our soils to about 30 centimeters deep, there's actually about 2,100 kilos of straight phosphorus, which is pure straight phosphorus. It's not phosphate, it's straight phosphorus. So when we consider how much wheat this actually could produce, um, considering like a, a three, kilo, three kilo phosphorus per tonne removal weight within our wheat, that's actually enough to supply 700 kilos of wheat from that one hectare just to 30 centimetres deep. Now considering some soil profiles might be a lot deeper or shallower than that, this number is probably a lot higher. Anyways, so we'll just consider 30 centimetres. So why is it that a lot of our crops are deficient in phosphorus? And why is phosphorus such a limiting factor when we have so much phosphorus in our actual soil? A lot of this has to do with the form that phosphorus is in. For example, it's usually tied up or locked up with other minerals within our soil, so it's not accessible to plants. But today I'm going to be talking about a process that actually makes it available. So the first thing to understand is the energy flow. So all of our energy on Earth comes from the sun. And plants have done this pretty cool thing where they can convert sunlight straight into a chemical form of energy in sugars. So if we follow the energy flow we're going from the sun into our plant, photosynthesis occurs now this plant can contribute as much as 40% of its sugars into the soil. So these sugars are going to flow into the soil via the roots. The reason why they want to contribute so much to the soil is for the process that we're about to explain. Now, when it feeds it out to the soil, it's going to feed out to microbes and fungi, as well as some other um, uh, soil microbes. So the microbes and fungi will pick up this uh, energy or the sugar, give it to rhizosphere microbes as well as lithotrope microbes. Now these microbes have a very interesting role in supplying minerals back up the system. So the lithotrope, litho means rock, tropes mean uh, eating or consuming, so rock eating microbes. So these microbes that can actually eat and digest rock into available forms for the other side of the food chain effectively. So by the plant contributing a lot of energy to the lithotropes as a carbon source, the lithotropes then exchange different nutrients back up to the plant. And so say for example, the, the plant needs phosphorus, it can communicate uh, down the chain to the mycorrhizae of fungi, to the lithotropes to say, I need phosphorus, I'll give you some sugar in exchange for phosphorus. And so what happens? Lithotropes then mine the soil particles to produce phosphorus, it goes back up the chain. So energy flows from the sun to the plant, mycorrhizal fungi, so out, out through the roots, mycorrhizal fungi, lithotropes. On the other side, we have our mineral cycle. So this is basically the complete opposite of that, and minerals flow from our soil, so the soil particles, back up to our plant. So we have, say, our phosphorus that our lithotropes uh, mine. They then give that to our mycorrhizal fungi in exchange for uh, sugars. Mycorrhizal fungi then will give that back to our plant in exchange for sugars. Now, our plant has phosphorus. So one of the massive problems with this process is that 
it doesn't actually work very well in typical agricultural soils. Now, when you think about you know, mass amounts of tillage, fallow periods, uh, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, like we apply fungicides, we're going to be killing microbes with fungi, as well as a lot of salt-based fertilizers and phosphorus applications, which is interesting enough. If we supply our plants phosphorus, they almost get lazy and don't rely on these microbes or fungal networks. But we've done so much to our soils that damage this process, that this process is not functional in most agricultural soils. Uh, this is typically how plants in, in native environments get their uh, nutrients. But as farmers, we can tap into this. We just need to start managing our farms in such a way that we reconnect this relationship between our plants, mycorrhizal fungi, and uh, lithotropes. So I'm gonna tell you how to do that now. So the best way, so there's really two components to this. We need our plant component. So if you think of the energy production side, and then we also need our mineral kind of side. So when we start thinking about our plants, we wanna have plants that are contrib contributing as much carbon as it can to our soil microbes. And so, there's really two aspects to this. The amount of carbon it's fixing, which is a function of photosynthesis. So if we can increase photosynthesis, photosynthesis, if we can increase that with correct nutrition. So when I talk about nutrition, we can either supply uh, the correct nutrition to our plants with either a starter fertilizer, making sure we get the right nutrients that, that the plant actually needs, or with foliar applications. They're probably the best with what we're talking about, uh, with the, micro, uh, the nutrients that we're talking about, because a lot of these are actually going to be a lot of our trace minerals that are typically deficient in our plants. So magnesium is the first one. This is required in chlorophyll, very important. If we don't have magnesium, we're not gonna have efficient photosynthesis. We need iron. Iron is important for the formation of chlorophyll as well as um, it, it broadens the range of the light that we can capture, the frequency of light. We're going to need uh, manganese, which is important for uh, splitting of water within the plant. We're going to need to have uh, sufficient amounts of nitrogen, which is also used in the chlorophyll molecule. On top of that, we're going to need uh, phosphorus. Now, funny enough, phosphorus, phosphorus, we find that the application of a lot of these as foliar sprays doesn't interrupt this process as much as applying it to the soil. The reason why, if we're applying it to the plant itself, not much is going to be coming into contact with the soil. And we're actually applying very small amounts, uh, just, just the amounts that we need for the plant to actually use efficiently. But these nutrients will get this plant to optimize its photosynthesis, uh, pho photosynthetic ability, which means it's going to have a higher carbon output. So that's one way we can increase photosynthesis and increase the amount of, carbons, uh, of carbon being produced. But if this plant's only in the ground for four months out of the whole year, regardless of how much we optimize the photosynthesis of this plant, it's only going to be able to produce for four months of the year. So what if we extended that and have plants growing all year round? So this can either be with cover crops, for example, in a cropping enterprise, or making sure we maintain good perennial plants in a pasture. So again, cover crops, really good. And then even applying uh, nutrition to our cover crops to maximize its ability to uh, fix carbon into our soil will really um, make the cover crop a lot more efficient. Next is our below ground. So this is our microbes. So the main thing with these is that we wanna do things that aren't damaging our soil microbes. So if you think about it, if we start planting up this paddock, we're going to be cutting up these uh, mycorrhizal fungi networks, which is not, not ideal. We want a really big network, mycorrhizal fungi, that goes through the ground. So we got, we want to start uh, minimal till, we'll continue with our minimal till. Most, most Australian farmers do practice no-till. Now fallow is another quite destructive um, process for our mycorrhizal fungi. It only takes a few weeks with no plants growing that our mycorrhizal fungi start to die out. So again, cover crops are really good to make sure we conserve our mycorrhizal fungi population. We wanna minimize our fungicide uh, use. Obviously fungicide on mycorrhizal fungi is gonna damage them. And then finally, we can apply inoculants to our plant seeds or, or even you know, fertilizer programs to stimulate this uh, process. 
I think the best value for money is definitely a seed coat or a seed inoculant of Mycoil's fungi, as well as a whole range of different other um, microbes. You can get that, um, there's a whole different range of different products. I think vermiculture is great, and concentrated vermiculture is, is really, really good. And that gets the biology and a bit of, and a bit of nutrition right into the seed coat of that plant straight away. And you can do that with um, uh, these nutrients onto the seed coat, it's right there, right next to biology and the plant can access it straight away. Ultimately, it comes down to nutrition uh, and biology and making sure we have a plant in the ground as long as possible. That's really gonna stimulate our microbes to then kickstart this process to then feed nutrients back up to our plant. Awesome, well, if you do need help with a process like that, let me know um, in the comments. I can make future videos if you have any questions. If you're an Australian farmer in New South Wales and you want me to come do stuff on your farm regarding this, Go to our website, it's at agrosalt.com.au. Go let me know uh, if, you, if you want some consulting services. Awesome, thanks for watching.